How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Set 6 and today we're going to be talking about something that came up in stream the other day and that is what will be the first chapter or the first thing that we see in Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 3. So we're going to dive into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe for future content, but yeah, let's crack on. So when it comes to this subject and how we're going to start Part 3, we have to look back to Remake and Rebirth, I think. Like, Remake was always going to start the way it started, with the shot of Aerith, and then the zoom out above Midgar, and then the zoom back in to Cloud and jumping off the train and everything like that, the bombing mission. Although the first thing that we see is technically that intro with kind of like the flyover of Midgar and everything like that. And the only thing that really shows us is some of the repercussions of what Shimmer are doing. You get that shot of the flowers that are wilted and everything like that. And then it pans straight up to the Mako reactor, which is just pumping out Mako energy. So that's the first thing that we see there. And then in Rebirth, the first thing that we see is the aftermath of what happened at the end of Remake. Or at least one of the aftermaths of what happened after Remake. Because we see it from the Terrier timeline. And we see the state of everything, everyone's dead. And then we focus on Zack, and Zack gets things going for us, and opens the game, and that's what we focus on. The aftermath, like I say, of what happened at the end of Remake. And then we get into the flashback and everything, of course. But they're the first things that we see. So, you got to think now, what is it likely to be that we're going to see first in Remake Part 3? And I've got a few options, we've got three, as per usual. So, let's jump into this. And the first one is we focus on Zack again. We've already had it explained to us several times over that, in Rebirth at least, Zack was going to be used to show us the way the world works and the way the worlds work. So it would make sense if we were to continue focusing on Zack, maybe get an explanation as to where he's ended up, maybe get a little bit of him taking in where he's ended up, because it's up for grabs where Zack is, which world Zack is in at the moment. So we could definitely get some kind of early stage tutorial, as well as getting a little bit of context around what's happened with Zack. You never know, we might even at some point get that scene from the end of Integrade that's just completely disappeared, and we're going to have to think about that at some point as well. But yeah, I think if we focus on Zack, it's going to continue very much in the same vein that it was in in Rebirth. We'll get him searching for Aerith probably to try and figure out what's going on, and also what his experience is as he goes through the worlds. That, that's what I think we'll see if it's Zack. Well, then the next option after Zack is probably Aerith. And if we end up starting with Aerith, I think it's very much going to be more of a cutscene opening where we get some context from Aerith's perspective as to what just went on at the end of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Because at the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, all of the questions were about Zack. Right now, a lot of the questions, if not 90% of them, are about Aerith. And what's gone on there? What is the situation? Is that really Aerith at the end interacting with Cloud? What has gone on? And also, you've got all the questions about this seemingly omni Aerith. So maybe we could get some context from their perspective as well. The problem with this is that it doesn't really give you any opening for a tutorial of any kind. It doesn't leave you open to anything like that. So if anything, if this Aerith context cutscene ends up happening, I would expect it to be used in conjunction with either the first option that we've just gone over with Zack, or in conjunction with the next one, which is probably the route we end up going, I would guess. It's just trying to work it out. But yeah, I think there will probably be some sort of cutscene that gives us not all of the context. I don't think it'll explain to us like, oh, this is what's happened with Aerith. Because the cutscenes at the start of Rebirth didn't explain to us fully what was going on with Zack. But I feel like it'll give us something. It'll give us a clue. It'll push us in the right direction a little bit. But the third one, like I was saying a second ago, is the one that I think the most likely to go with. And that is Cloud, obviously. Because Cloud is the main character of the game. So it makes sense to focus on Cloud. Although we didn't do that immediately in Rebirth. So this is why it's up for conjecture and conversation, because there is a strong possibility that we could open with Zack or Aerith, but if it's Cloud, what shape does that take? And I think if it ends up being Cloud, the chances are we've left on the tiny Bronco, we're flying, and we're heading north. 
So from the Forgotten Capital where we are, there aren't many things in between us and Nor. So I would guess that something's going to happen to the Tiny Bronco potentially. It could happen before we even get to Icicle Inn, and then that is what forces us to then travel to Icicle Inn and start there. But it feels weird opening the game with snowboarding. I don't know, I think that'd be a little bit weird. It, they could do it, they could definitely do it, but I feel like that could be a little bit weird. I've got a feeling that we're going to end up going past Icicle Inn, potentially, and go straight to the snowfields. And if that ends up being the case, then we can see something happen to the Tiny Bronco, Everyone gets separated in the snowfields. Sid stays behind to kind of get the tiny Bronco working again. So we don't get access to Sid right away. But this would be the perfect opportunity for us to maybe get some Vincent combat. So maybe we split off with Cloud. We get the first initial bits of tutorial while we're killing things in the snowfields. Then we bump into Vincent. Get the Vincent tutorial to catch us up on him a little bit. And then we find the rest of the party. And then from there, we're in the snowfields, we're heading north towards the mountain and the north crater. And that feels like it's potentially the best way for him to go with it. I think it's very possible that we could get this and the first two all in the first chapter. Because I don't think we're going to get a massive amount of stuff for Zack in the same way that we did in Rebirth. You know, with him chasing the helicopters down and saving everything. It wasn't massive, but it was, you know, it was more than just a quick cutscene. I think we probably get something that's more similar to a quick cutscene. Same with Aerith, probably more likely to get a quick cutscene, just giving us a bit of context. And then we move into whatever happens with the Tiny Bronco. Because there's no way the Tiny Bronco can fly all of the way to the North Crater. It's going to have to stop somewhere, so there is potential for it to stop at Icicle Inn. But then we're just opening straight into a town, and there's not really an opportunity for combat tutorial until after we've done snowboarding. And the first bit of gameplay in part three being snowboarding feels like it could be a bit weird. But the more I'm saying it now, the more I think it could happen. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's more likely that we end up, like I say, crashing into the snowfield maybe, or having to at least land at the snowfield. Maybe bad weather causes something. As, as Omnia suggested in stream the other day, maybe Shimmer attack the tiny Bronco at some point. And that's why we have to land and it kind of catches us up with the state of the tiny Bronco from the OG after Rocket Town. But that had kind of... I don't know about that because it would maybe mean that the tiny Bronco is completely done. But Sid could fix it. And I suppose it would make more sense for Sid to stay behind then and fix it while the rest of us go on. I don't know. There's a lot of options for what they could do. But I think that's enough about my early thoughts. I want to know what you lot think. So get in the comments below. Let me know how do they start Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3. What is the first chapter? What is the first thing that we see? Like, do we see Sephiroth? Do we start with something crazy? Do we start with another flashback, maybe, of some sorts that we're not quite thinking of? Let me know in the comments below what you're thinking. It's a very interesting topic because it will set the tone for the rest of the game going forwards in a lot of ways. So, yeah, I think speculation about how they open it could actually be quite useful. So let me know in the comments below what you're thinking. Don't forget, like the video, subscribe for future content because there's going to be a lot more stuff coming. Not just Final Fantasy, but other things. We've got Metaphor Refantasio on the go. It's amazing. Check it out if you can. We are streaming, so, you know, keep an eye out for streams going live every now and again. I'm not sure how regular they're going to be going forwards. I've got a lot of things going on at the minute, so I'll be able to lock into a schedule, I think, over the next few weeks. But at the minute, we're just streaming whenever we can and get into it. So keep an eye out there. We're playing Metaphor at the minute, and yeah, it's great fun. The music in that game is crazy. Crazy. But yeah, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below about how they open Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3. Don't forget, like the video, subscribe for future content. But more importantly than all of that, have a great day.